The song you just heard was Fences. It is from Taylor Ackley and Deep Roots Ensemble. Uh, nothing is more bluegrass than looking back at something that's lost, but uh, the, the horns, not so much. So this is an interesting band. Let's have Taylor and Allison introduce themselves to start things off. Hi, my name is Taylor Ackley, and I am the founder and director of the Deep Roots Ensemble. Hi, my name is Allison Ackley, and I'm Taylor's wife, and also the cellist and uh, vocalist in the Deep Roots Ensemble. So, uh, Fences is part of a few songs on the album based on your family's history, Taylor. Why don't you tell me the story of your family in Montana? Great. So, well, the story of my family, at least the, the part of the family that uh, this album is exploring, uh, starts in Kentucky, where uh, my ancestors have lived since the early 1700s. And uh, as is the case for a lot of people that have historical ties to that part of the Appalachian region, um, the realities of poverty were, were a really big part of my family history. And so after World War II, um, the, my family that was living in Kentucky finally decided that enough was enough and they decided to find a new place to live, which is you know, really a remarkable thing to do after having lived in a place for somewhere about 250 years. And so they left the farm in Kentucky and they all moved with uh, my, so it was my great grandparents with their, let's see, seven children moved up to Northwestern Montana. And so the song uh, Tools of the Trade kind of describes uh, what life was like for my family in Kentucky. Then after that comes the song Exodus, which kind of highlights the moment right before they leave Kentucky and go to Montana. Um, then after that comes the Glacier Suite, which is an instrumental and it's kind of celebrating the time that my family lived in Montana. And finally, we get this last song, Fences, um, which is kind of my personal reminiscing on uh, my family losing our family home in Montana. So it, it's a little bit full circle. I, I don't, Montana represented this beautiful new life for my family. And certainly I had all sorts of opportunities that my grandparents didn't have in Kentucky, uh, but likewise, um, the realities of being part of the working poor uh, meant that this beautiful home that my dad built for us to live in, uh, he got hurt and then they really weren't able to live there anymore. And so we left there and uh, still go back and visit family there, but you know, I don't have a home to go back to in Montana. And so that kind of seemed to be the way that that story wrapped up and fences kind of captures my feelings about that. And then you uh, eventually found your way to Long Island. Um, That's right. And developed uh, this really unique bluegrass chamber music hybrid style. Um, where exactly did that concept appear to you? So when I first got to Stony Brook, I was working on a series of graduate degrees in composition. And the general expectation when you are working on a master's and then a PhD in composition is that you're primarily working within and drawing upon the Western, sorry, <laughs> you're primarily working within and drawing upon the Western classical tradition. And then to a certain extent, perhaps the 20th century art music, maybe a little bit of jazz. Um, but, uh, Partway through uh, being in graduate school, um, I guess it was just really the first year of my master's, um, my father became very sick and my parents actually lost their home for a second time in my life. And uh, I went back from being on Long Island to Washington State where they were living and I helped them out, helped them move and kind of helped take care of my father a little bit. And I had to come to a decision. Uh, did I want to keep pursuing music or did I need to, to go back home and help my family? And after 
helping them for about a month and a half and getting them settled back uh, with some family in Montana, um, I decided that I, I really did want to finish graduate school, but that if I was going to do it, I really needed to make music that mattered to me. And so I almost entirely abandoned my previous style, which had grown largely out of avant-garde classical music. And I completed, completely devoted myself to making music that drew upon my family's history and the music that I had made with my family um, all throughout my life. So my whole family is folk musicians. They play bluegrass and country and blues and have for a really long time. And that stretches back to the family in Kentucky. And so I decided that I needed to find a way to make this music a part of my career. And I really just started playing music and found a few people who were interested in playing this type of music. And the first people that uh, really got connected into it were a fabulous French hornist who was from Egypt and working on his DMA and French horn performance. His name was Amr Salim. And then uh, the person who at that time was Alison Rowe. Um, <laughs> And she started playing with me. And so we kind of had this trio of banjo and French horn and cello. And Allison, do you want to talk about that at all? Um, well, I come from a classical background. So I you know, started playing the cello when I was six and was very much um, a classical musician. So I read music and uh, really didn't improvise or anything like that. So when Poor I sing or sing well I sang but more classical style things so um when I met Taylor and started playing with him and Amr we really started doing something I had never done before so that was a really really a uh, big change in my my musical life Allison why don't you talk more about the time when you two met sure um so Taylor and I actually both lived in the west graduate apartments um on stony brook on campus and um he lived in the apartment above mine and we we met i think we met at orientation probably the mm -hmm. music music department orientation and we um just started you know to become friends and uh joe spara who is the clarinetist in the group was also part of our little cohort and we um we just started to spend more and more time together <laughs> so um that's how we you know decided to really start working together in this way and to start dating so the band has given you a couple albums now it's given you a marriage um mm -hmm. so now you're moving your talents to boston that's right um so uh after finishing my PhD or kind of while I was finishing it, um, I was applying for teaching positions and I was asked to become a professor of music at Brandeis University, which is a, a wonderful school with a great music department. And they brought me in as a specialist in American folk and roots music. So I teach classes all about American music. Um, and I'm starting an ensemble here that is modeled after the Deep Roots Ensemble, but will involve students from Brandeis. So it's uh, with this ensemble, not only has it you know, built wonderful relationships and friendships and musical opportunities, it's now become the core part of what I'm doing professionally. It's like your band is giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. All right, um, we're going to take a quick break, but first up, I'm going to let you two each choose a song uh, that we'll play during our break. Um, I'm going to have a couple rules. Number one, it can't be your own music. Um, and number two, I want you to take the instrument that you play most and pick an American Roots song where you feel it shines. Great. Um, do you want to start with one? It's a little <laughs> trickier on the cello. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, no, I don't want to start. You oh, should okay. start. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, but I was thinking, um, what's the group with Brianna and Giddens and uh, what's it called? 
Just... Carolina Chocolate Jobs? No, no her um, newer group. Native, Native, Native Daughters? Native Daughters, is that what it's called? I think so. Because they have a wonderful cellist in their daughter. group. Yeah, yeah. Um, Layla McCalla, who is really amazing. Um, let me... Now you go, Taylor. Because okay. I'm, I'm well, she's up. picking. <laughs> um, she had a much trickier yes. <laughs> endeavor at picking a great song um, with the cello on it uh, in Roots Music. For me, there's so many. Um, I primarily consider myself a mandolinist. So let's go with that. Um, and perhaps my favorite mandolinist is a guy named David Grisman. Um, he's sort of the in my opinion, greatest mandolinist in terms of combining American roots music with classical music and jazz. He, he really accomplished so much of what uh, I hope to in my music. So there's a wonderful album uh, he came out with in 1977. It was just titled The David Grisman Quintet. And I really love the tune Swing 51 from that album. All right. Definitely familiar with Grisman, but not uh, so much Swing 51. Um, I would say, I'm actually gonna pick just a Layla McCalla song. Um, it's called A Day for the Hunter. Oh, I love um, that one. And, yeah. Um, so she does some really interesting things on the cello that I love. Um, and I'm actually looking at playing one of, she wrote a piece recently for just solo cello, um, that I'm looking at getting, <laughs> it's, it's a very new piece. So I'm looking at getting it, but, um, she really uses, you know, the fiddle sound and the classical cello sound in a way that I think really merges them in a fantastic way. So, and I love her voice too. She's got a great voice. So. All right. Swing 51 and a day for the hunter. We'll be right back. 